Good morning. God's peace and blessings be with you on this day, which we give thanks to God and uh, his gifts for us. Our order of service is up on the screen for you to follow along, uh, page 203 in the hymnals if you'd like to follow along there. Uh, at this time, we stand to greet and welcome one another with the peace of our Lord Jesus. It's been ages.
invite you to please stand as we rejoice in giving thanks to God for the name that he had placed upon us in our baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we continue with the Kyrie followed by the Gloria. be with you. We pray together. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 20th Sunday after Pentecost comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 25, uh, where the prophet gives us a uh, picture of the uh, great banquet feast of the last day when our Lord will swallow up death forever. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. 
He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. And it will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with a musical offering. Thank you, Handbell Choir. Our epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, uh, where Paul uh, reminds us that we are to rejoice in all circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be it known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. 
What have you learned and received and heard from and seen in me? Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. In reverence of our Savior Jesus and his gospel, we stand to sing. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. And here Jesus tells the parable of the royal banquet of God's uh, great grace and salvation for all people to be invited. Again, Jesus spoke uh, uh, spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry, and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those invited are not worthy. Go, therefore, to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and we invite the children forward for the children's message led by our D.C. Josh. And while they're coming forward, we'd ask that you would fill out the attendance cards that are found in the pews. Uh, If you have prayer requests, you may include those on the cards for our prayers this morning. And in preparation of the Lord's Supper today, we'd ask that you would uh, prepare and examine yourselves using the statements that are found on the cards. All right. Hi, ladies. All right. Well, it's good to see you folks today. You see you guys today. Everybody doing well? We're well. All right. Well, I have a question for you. Okay, are you ready? Have you ever forgotten something? No. Have you ever forgotten something? No. Well, you're doing a lot better than me because I've forgotten many things in, in my day. Yeah. yeah. Like sometimes I forget where the car keys are and I have to get to work and I guess what I can't find the car keys. So I have to ask my wife and my son to help me find them, and usually they're in the place where they're supposed to be. I just didn't look very well. 
but I still forget things, though. Yeah. And sometimes I forget where, um, I, get, I forget names of people. You know, being a church worker, there's a lot of names you've got to remember, and sometimes I forget that. Um, that can be a challenge, too. But it's easy for you guys, though, because you don't forget anything, so I wish I had your mind. But my question for you, though, now is, do you think God forgets us? Do you think Jesus ever forgets us? No, yeah. He can't forget us because he's God. And God is all-knowing and all-powerful. He knows everything about us. He knows what we think. That can be a good thing or a bad thing at times. But he knows us, and he does not forget about us. And he loves us very, very much, right? And how do we know that he loves us very much? How do we know that? Yeah, we know that. How do we know that? Because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead for us. We know how much God loves us. And he doesn't forget about us. And he can helps us. He strengthens us through our tough times. Like when we're sad, we know that we can go back to the Bible and read about Jesus. And he tells us over and over again how much he loves us and that he'll never leave us. Okay, so next time you are sad and you need help with something, go back to the Bible and find Jesus. Can you do that? Okay. Well, let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for our church. Thank you for this day. And thank you for loving us. Amen. All right, I'll see you next time.
Now, all throughout this year, we've been uh, highlighting our theme of called by God. And each month, we've been highlighting a, a different uh, vocation to which God calls us to serve Him. And during this month of October, which has uh, been uh, uh, set aside as a pastor or church worker appreciation month, we uh, this month are uh, focusing and highlighting those who have been called into church work. Uh, to a professional church work. And one way of uh, recognizing uh, this noble task, as Paul refers to it in, in, uh, to Timothy, uh, is that uh, during our love offerings, we are uh, giving to the uh, seminary, adopt a student to help prepare future pastors for this noble task of getting to share God's grace with others. But it's not just the pastors that we uh, celebrate, but it's also uh, those who are uh, called to uh, to serve in his church, like DCEs, like Josh, or deaconesses, like Andy, uh, teachers, missionaries. Uh, we give thanks to God for all those uh, that he has called, and so we rejoice, uh, giving thanks uh, for those who have dedicated their lives to the caring for the souls of people. Now, a little over uh, 15 years ago, I stood before this congregation to be ordained into the office of the Holy Ministry, and I gotta admit, I really don't remember a whole lot about that day, a little bit of a whirlwind. I do remember processing into a thy strong word. Uh, I remember uh, my, my pastoral mentor from my fieldwork church down in St. Louis, Bob Mondahl, uh, he, preached the sermon that day. I have to admit, I don't remember everything that he said. I do remember he mentioned something about uh, purple and gold, uh, not in reference to the Vikings, but to the LWML. Uh, and, uh, and I remember uh, during on the, uh, the laying, of, uh, laying on of hands, uh, all of these pastors shared, uh, shared a scripture verse uh, with me and a uh, little insight into those. But uh, I really only remember Pastor Dave's uh, comment, what he had to say. He shared from Romans chapter 12, Rejoice in the Lord, uh, rejoice uh, with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. And he said this really kind of summarizes, this verse really summarizes what pastoral ministry is all about. That we rejoice and celebrate with our people in their, in their joys and uh, the things that they have to celebrate, but we also mourn and weep in their sorrows. And so this was kind of Pastor Dave's go-to verse at ordinations. He would share this with a new pastor to remind them of the great joy that we have in ministry. Uh, pastor Dave often lamented that many ordination sermons uh, kind of stressed and highlighted just how tough ministry is. And he'd walk away from that ordination sermon going, who in the world would ever want to be a pastor after listening to that? Where's the joy, Pastor Dave would ask. And so uh, taking my cue from Pastor Dave uh, to share that joy that we have in the ministry, I've typically uh, used this verse from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And I share with these new pastors that yes, there are days in ministry that are tough. But we have the joy of getting to share Jesus. We have the joy of getting to give his gifts of, uh, of, uh, through his means of grace, of forgiveness, life, and salvation. So we have this great joy uh, to do. And what greater joy is there than that? And I think it's really quite fitting to share these verses with uh, these new young pastors. For when Paul wrote these words to the Philippians, he was in prison. And yet while he's in prison, he can say, Rejoice! Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, Rejoice! That we can rejoice in all circumstances, uh, each and any circumstance that we find ourselves in. And I know, uh, I don't know about you, but, you know, being in prison isn't exactly on the top of my list of places to be filled with joy, right? 
I don't think uh, that, that was a pretty tough day in ministry to be sitting in a jail cell, and yet Paul rejoices. And why is he rejoicing? Because of Jesus. Paul had this great ministry. Paul rejoices that the Lord had won for him his salvation, that he was saved by God's grace through him, that he was saved from eternal death, and that he had eternal life through our Savior Jesus, through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. And that's our joy as well. We have that joy uh, not from the things of this world. Yes, they might uh, give us some temporary satisfaction, might make us happy for some time, but as Paul reminded us last week, all of these things are rubbish. They don't last. They're only temporary. They don't stick around. They come and they go. But what we have in Jesus is forever. It lasts, no matter what our circumstances may be. Now, yesterday, I had a pretty tough funeral here. A tough funeral with many tough circumstances around it. But afterwards, uh, someone came up to me and they said, I enjoyed your service as much as you can enjoy a funeral service. She almost became apologetic for being joyful at a funeral service. Uh, service. But I told her, you know, that's okay. We can be filled with joy, even in difficult circumstances, because of that joy that we have in Jesus. And so Paul knows what it was like for us, uh, what it's like for us to go through difficult times, difficult circumstances, and still be able to express joy. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're always happy, that we feel wonderful, but I think this, uh, this comment from a funeral, I, uh, I enjoyed the service, really exemplifies what Paul is speaking for us, telling us that we can rejoice in all circumstances because of the great joy that we have in Jesus. For Paul said, I know uh, how to be brought low. I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And what was that secret that Paul had? Well, it was really no secret at all. That secret to his joy and contentment was having Jesus. Having Jesus in everything. Because of Jesus, Paul could face each and any circumstance that he faced in his life. Neither the abundance of things nor the lack of things. They, none of those things moved Paul away from that what was most important. That when we have Jesus, we have everything. We have forgiveness. We have life, we have salvation, we have God's love, we have eternal joy, we have that certainty that God cares for us and he provides for all that we need, no matter what our circumstances might be. And so with Paul, we can rejoice, rejoice always. Again, I will say rejoice. And so there is great joy in ministry. One of my greatest joys I get to do uh, at the second service today, and that's baptize a baby. Because, you know, babies don't have anything to offer to God. And so we get to see with our very own eyes God's grace in action as that water is poured on the child's head and his name is placed upon him. We get to see God washing that child cleansed from their sins. We get to see them brought into that kingdom of God and it all is solely by God's grace where he washes away those sins and welcomes us into the family of believers. And what greater joy is there than that. Or when I'm in a Bible class teaching and you can kind of see that light bulb go on in someone, that their faith is beginning to click, it's making sense to them, and they, uh, they're connecting their faith to their life, and that's a great joy. 
Or when I'm here in a worship service preaching a sermon and, and uh, everybody is uh, hanging on every word, intent to listen to what's going on, so uh, focused and attentive uh, to, to what I have to say that you could hear a pin drop, and not because they've fallen asleep, but because they are hanging on to that good and gracious gift of God, that joy that we have in Jesus. And yes, there are times when ministry is tough. There's times when, uh, when we still have to, uh, when we still weep with those who weep, You get two sinners together and there's bound to be conflict. Loved ones die. People get mad and leave the church. But there's always, and there's always more to do. There's never enough time. But we who have been called to work in the church, as well as all people who call themselves Christians, we have that joy of getting to share Jesus with them, getting to share the love and forgiveness of Christ with all people. And what greater joy is there than that? Amen. We now stand to confess our faith and our joy in our triune God. Uh, In the words of the Apostles' Creed, uh, our joy in the God who has created us, uh, the God who has redeemed us and forgiven us of our sins, and the God who gives us that faith that we may rejoice in all things and rejoice always. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And we thank you for your generosity as moved by the Spirit to give of your tithes and offerings to the work of the Lord. And uh, as I mentioned, our love offering is going to the Seminary Adopt-A-Student program uh, for this month of October. Uh, We continue with our offertory. Uh, We give thee but thine own. We, give, uh, we uh, continue to pray for those who are in our bulletin. Uh, we also uh, pray for uh, Corey Wright's nephew's uh, daughter, Elodie, uh, whom we've been praying for. Uh, she'll be undergoing some heart surgery this week, and so we ask for God's blessings on her. We pray. Holy Lord, uh, your son Jesus purchased the church with his precious blood and preserve her in the pure teaching of your word, in the right use of the sacraments, and in the unity of the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you call pastors to proclaim the gospel of the forgiveness of sin, to baptize, to nourish uh, your people with your supper, and to minister in countless ways to your flock, along with all those whom you've called to assist in the carrying out of this ministry including DCEs and deaconesses, teachers and missionaries, that we may rejoice always because of the surpassing joy of Jesus. 
We ask for your blessings, especially for uh, Carol and Pastor Bobby as they share uh, that good news of Christ with those that you've placed in their midst. And we also ask for your spirit to be upon Pastor Bertel as he uh, considers the call here to St. John's, that you would give him clarity uh, to, uh, as he makes his decision on where you would have him best serve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Almighty Father, bless all families and the homes in which our, uh, your people dwell. Uh, grant grace to husbands and wives that they may fulfill their vocations to one another and to their children. Grant also that, as a family, they may faithfully teach and learn the faith together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly King, grant your wisdom to President Biden and to Governor Noam and all who make and administer our laws, that, they, uh, that we may live in continual godliness and in the peace that uh, passes all understanding. And bring your peace to war-torn nations uh, in Ukraine and Israel, and protect all those who are in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, you promise to wipe away the tears from all faces, and bless uh, all those who are struggling with uh, cancer for Jared and Jean, Lindy and Emily, for David and Dennis, Jeremy, Stan, Faye, Pam, Arliss and Bob for uh, Christy and Linda, and grant your health and healing to those afflicted with other health concerns for Cecilia and Roger, Dan and uh, or for Dave and for Jerry, Walter and Edna for Berlin, for Sandy and Jan, David, Dee and Chris, Ruth and Lori, Ellen, Don and Clarence for Bob and Rich, Ruth, and for. Um, and for the uh, little Elodie, uh, we pre especially pray that you would bless the doctors and nurses uh, with the skills and the knowledge uh, to bring about uh, uh, a successful surgery for her. And Lord, uh, grant your comfort to those who mourn for the family of Joyce as they mourn the death of, her, uh, of Ron and, uh, and also for the List family that you would comfort them with your peace, a peace that only you can give, uh, that, uh, that they may be comforted and restored and received uh, into the banquet feast of your eternal paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have prepared a table before us, and keep your church unstained by the world, that we may partake of the Lord's Supper worthily, clothed in his baptismal grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, give us such joy in pursuing what is true, just, pure, and worthy of praise, that spurning all temptations of this world, we would suffer no anxiety. Let our trust be placed fully in Christ, and let our hope rest in the life of the world to come. This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand now in preparation for the Lord's Supper. And uh, again, during the distribution, uh, we'd ask that you would uh, reflect on the statements that will be up on the screen, that we would come worthy and well prepared to receive the body and blood of our Savior Jesus for our forgiveness. And if you desire to take the common cup, we'd ask that you would cross your arms across your chest to signify that to the server. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us and all creation. And above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for, uh, for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, uh, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always.
stand to sing the Nook de Minas. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
Good morning. You may be seated. God's grace and joy be with you today, uh, knowing that uh, in, uh, in all circumstances we have Jesus, and what great joy that is. Um, for, uh, before I get into announcements, uh, first of all, uh, if, uh, I think you should grab uh, D, uh, Josh, our DCE, or Andy, uh, Deaconess, and ask them what their greatest joys uh, of the ministry are. I got uh, my opportunity to share, share mine and uh, be great to uh, hear what their joys uh, in the ministry are. Uh, if you've got questions about uh, full-time church work, maybe feeling a little bit of a nudge uh, toward that, whether you're young or uh, uh, second career, older, uh, or, uh, it's, it's such a great joy to, to serve the Lord uh, full-time uh, in his church. Uh, and so we thank uh, Josh and, and Andy for uh, answering that call to serve uh, as professional church workers. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, mission trip project, uh, uh, I think, Susan, did you say that you're taking them today to Vermilion? So uh, if you were planning to bring it in, uh, try to get it in uh, before the end of second service here so that uh, Susan can take those to, uh, to Vermilion today. He's going to take them to the person up in Sioux Falls that will be bringing them to Guatemala. Uh, we've got a wonderful uh, basket full of, uh, of many people who have participated with that, and so thank you. Um, next Sunday, we're pleased to have Pastor Paul Winkler uh, as our guest preacher. Uh, Pastor Winkler's been here in our congregation several times. Uh, his family's from this area, and so he's come uh, to, to uh, visit and, and, uh, and uh, be fed with God's Word. And, and uh, next week, we get the opportunity to have him uh, feed us with God's Word. And, uh, and then on October 29th, uh, we'll be celebrating uh, God's grace for us uh, and our salvation in Christ alone with our Reformation Festival. Uh, that'll be following the services on Sunday, uh, that Sunday, uh, with brats and hot dogs and, and beer, good Lutheran beverages, uh, asking the congregation to, uh, to bring a potluck, a dish to share, or dessert. Uh, if you can make it German theme, that would be wonderful, especially if you bring a black forest cherry cake. Uh, you will make me incredibly happy, and we'll have uh, games and activities and uh, door prizes as well. And Josh, I think the next couple are yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a couple quick announcements here. Uh, at the end of the month, October 29th, don't forget that Generations and Faith Together gift. So there is no traditional Sunday school, but we are inviting you to come and um, be part of GIFT. We're going to, the topic is going to be focusing on unbelief. And again, GIFT is for everyone, adults, children, and everyone in between. So highly encourage you to attend. If you have not attended one before, they're actually very, very fun. And we have um, lots of good discussions there. Um, yes, on Sunday, November 5th at 1145 after second service, uh, I'll be doing a presentation on iGen and Jesus. The iGen is referring to the uh, internet generation. And if you look in your bulletin here, I'm giving you did you know facts until that presentation. So if you see in your bulletin there, did you know some very interesting facts. So I would highly encourage you to come um, to learn more about this unique situation with the I generation because they're the only generation that has grown up with the internet. They know nothing else but the internet and how that affects them, but also how they affect the church, but also how the church and Jesus can affect them. So we're discussing all about that on um, November 5th, 1145. Lunch is provided. Because lunch is provided, please let me know. There's a sign-up sheet outside the door. And lastly, I just want to formally inform you that I have been extended a call from Faith Lutheran in Pleasant Hill, California. So I just ask for your prayers and discernment as where the Holy Spirit's leading my family and myself. Thank you. <laughs> 